Hello, I'm professional video game expert Tim Rogers. You are watching Kotaku.com. Today we are looking at Two Rock Dinosaur Hunter. Night Dive Studios, that's a really cool developer name, has remastered Two Rock Dinosaur Hunter and Two Rock 2 Seeds of Evil for the Xbox One. The two games are available on March 2nd, 2018. Night Dive Studios also remastered the game for the PC back in, uh, let me check Wikipedia, uh, 2015 and 2017, respectively. Whoa, the founder of Night Dive Studios' his name is literally Stephen Kick. Oh my god, that owns. I have honestly never hated my own name as much as I do right now. Oh. Part of being a professional video game expert is possessing the wherewithal to acknowledge superior expertise. I love Turok, and I beat the first two games back on the Nintendo 64. However, my good friend Brent Porter has played through them about a billion times each. So rather than capture some footage of myself competently ham-handling the Xbox One remasters, I begged Brent Porter to capture his own prodigious talents on the PC remasters. I didn't give him the codes for the Xbox One remasters because he already owns the games on PC, and also because Night Dive Studios gave those codes to me, not him, and I want those codes. Hey, if you're a video game developer, send me codes, or I'll actually cry. Plus, it's my duty as a professional video game expert to comment on the Xbox One remasters. Here's my comment. Yeah, those Xbox One remasters are excellent remasters. 4K? More like OK. Sign me up. Now let's talk about our buddy Two Rock. For those about Two Rock, we... I should cut that. Two Rock Dinosaur Hunter is a game based on a comic book series that began in 1956. Back then, he was called Two Rock, Son of Stone, which sounds awesome no matter where you're from. Two Rock is a Native American stereotype who gets trapped in a lost valley full of dinosaurs in New Mexico. In the tradition of comic book stories inspired by The Phantom, Two Rock is a title applied to characters across many generations. The Phantom's structure would eventually also inspire JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Hey! Check out the 1996 film The Phantom, starring Billy Zane. That's the guy who played the psycho jerk in Titanic. It is 100% definitely my favorite comic book movie. Chances are, if you played Turok Dinosaur Hunter back when it first came out, you've already seen The Phantom. Shout me out in the comments if you like how I'm not talking about the game, though still kinda talking about the game. Turok Dinosaur Hunter confused reviewers and players when it came out on the Nintendo 64 in 1997. I distinctly recall untouched parts of my subconscious catching fire when I first attempted to wrap my hands around the controls. You had to use an analog stick to aim. It was so exotic and frightening. It still is, if you know what I mean. The first person jumping tore my brain matter into brain tatters. Ultimately, Two Rock Dinosaur Hunter's legacy was that it showed the developers of GoldenEye how much was too much for the game likers of 1997. Goldeneye flat out would not have been as good as it was if Turok hadn't messed up some of the unpredictable stuff it messed up. I was a college student with a part-time job at Target when Turok Dinosaur Hunter first came out. My buddy Brent Porter is a little younger than me. Maybe that's why he knows where literally everything in this game is. He's so good at Turok that I had to scour his footage to find even a single moment where he lingers long enough to watch a monster die. He runs and guns his way through this twisted nightmare level design. One might say Brent Porter knows how to rock level designs are laid out. Last night I watched Porter play Two Rock. Brent Porter talked me through his anecdotal almanac of Two Rock tips. Here are his tips. Number one, have literally no other video game except this video game for a couple hot Kansas summer months in 1997. That's all of Porter's tips. Porter pointed out this circular maze section. Look at this, he said. How do they expect a human brain to get through this any other way than by just being trapped in it for like a year with nothing else to do. One of the many things I've never stopped loving since the 1990s is Two Rock yelling, I am Two Rock, when he gets an extra life. It's like when the power of the extra life flows through him, it spiritually reminds him of his name. I am Two Rock. 
Turok. You're gonna play Turok Dinosaur Hunter for about a year and a half before you see an enemy who looks something like a dinosaur. About three years in, there's a dude who has a passing resemblance to a T-Rex. It occurs to me that Turok Dinosaur Hunter's glorious reptilians are residents of a civilization of some sort. They have tools and guns and buildings. Is it even hunting at that point? If a deer ate with a fork, would it be hunting to shoot at it? If you're storming into a city whose walls an animal evidently built by itself, it's kinda not hunting. It's more like hating. Maybe a more accurate title would have been To Rock. Dinosaur Hater. I mean, at this point, you might as well make a game about shooting horses in their stable and call it Two Rock Horse Hunter. This all reminds me of a game me and my buddies Brent Porter and Michael Kerwin have been making together. We call it Kangarooiner. It's basically Two Rock, except you're shooting kangaroos. Have you ever seriously looked at a kangaroo? They're sick. The hero of Kangarooiner is Tony Totaloni, an American tourist in mutant Australia. He gets bitten by a nuclear kangaroo so he can jump really high. Also, he has a shotgun, armed only with two barrels, a bottomless pocket full of shells, a vertical leap that would fill Michael Jordan's diaper, and infinite hatred of marsupials. Tony Totaloni is gonna totally own each and every kangaroo that so much as looks at him sideways. Like, seriously, are these guys dinosaurs? Are hot dogs sandwiches? Are Pop-Tarts ravioli? You'd have to be a real dinosaur connoisseur to classify this monsieur as a dinosaur. Maybe that's what they are, connoisseurs. They're dinosaurs with discerning taste, hence their humanoid limbs, and respect of architecture. Hmm, connoisseur. Now I'm thinking about the dinosaur from Carnosaur wearing a monocle. I've known Brent Porter for a long time. We've been making video games together for eight years. Wow, oh my god, eight years? I'd feel weird interviewing him about Turok. I couldn't bring myself to formally ask, notebook in hand, Porter, why do you like Turok so much? So, I have to guess. He seems to like only three other games as much as Turok Dinosaur Hunter. Those games are Daytona USA, Quake 2, and Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. I know that Porter loves big 3D geometry and levels that feel carved out of solid, massive pieces of stone. He feels at home in big, sprawling playgrounds of honest geometry. Notice that this video footage he captured is only 720p. This is because Porter does not care to upgrade his PC any more than is required to run Quake 2 at 144 frames per second in 720p. Porter loves Quake 2, by the way, because it is the only video game that lets you kill Strogs. Seriously, try to think of another video game where you kill Strogs. Oh wait, actually, I forgot there in Quake 4 as well. Man, look at this part, where you have to jump onto all of these pillars, and an angry dude just falls out of the sky right onto the top of the next pillar immediately after you land. I mean, this is hilarious. I promise I'm not hating, I just, I, I love this stuff. I love video games, man. I mean, look at video games. Video games are goofier than a cotton candy sandwich. Me and my friends have this term we use a lot. We refer to such and such game as a hangout game, if it has a certain genesis qua to its level design. Like, the level designers are thinking about the player and being like, uh, the player will probably want to chill in this room for a couple minutes before they shoot something. Hidden in every level of Two Rock Dinosaur Hunter are pieces of the Chrono Scepter. If you get all of them in all of the levels, you get an almighty weapon. By this point, though, there's only about enough enemies left in the game for you to be able to fire this weapon once or maybe twice. The Chrono Scepter pieces are hidden in the weirdest out of the the wayest places, rewarding players for hanging out longer and harder. Wow, this is a long climb. You can even hang out in boss rooms. Witness this boss room here. Here a circle of walls surrounds an arena on a lower level. When the player jumps down from these walls, they won't be able to jump back up. They'll be locked in with the boss. If you want to stock up on items and ammo before the boss, the level designers have provided some for you. Under the water of the moat behind the arena walls. Here we see Porter swimming laps with surgical precision to obtain all this barely secret good stuff. Ugh. <sighs> 
By the way, this arena is where you fight Long Hunter. I personally cannot imagine a better boss name than Long Hunter. Long Hunter is a guy with a truck. The truck is just constantly squealing its tires and doing donuts while you strafe run around it at like 30 miles per hour. Two Rock, more like Tuh-Ruck. The Two Rock games are old and weird. They are interesting for a variety of reasons that will reward patient players. They have a good shotgun. The jumping is nuts. If you played these games in the 1990s and you want to strafe gun a truck in 4K on your Xbox One X, then hey buddy, these 60 frames per second are all yours. I personally haven't played through the Turok games since, well, since Night Dive Studios remastered them for PC in 2015 and 2017. Will I play them again? The answer to that question is another question. Do I have a 65 inch 4K TV and an Xbox One Elite controller? Well, the answer to that question is, I was born stupid. However, I will not die hungry. Video games forever, Kotaku.com.